Hello boaters, welcome to Narrowboat Journeys. Now this little video is just a chatty one about stove safety. Um, the stove is the heart of your boat in the winter. Everything revolves around it. It's really important that you keep an eye on things because it can also be lethally dangerous. And anyway, I'm talking about not letting the stove get out of control because typically when you light a stove, or when you rekindle the stove in the morning when it's burned down really low, what you'd normally do is you'd put in some a little bit of kindling wood if necessary, but basically add some more coal or solid fuel or whatever you're using. And then you need to open up the bottom of the stove to allow lots of air to get to it. Um, usually you would just take the poker and just riddle through the grate just slightly just to let the air, air to go through, but without disturbing the base of the fire too much. Um, and then it's just a matter of waiting, you know, letting the air go through, letting the fuel catch. And when it's going nicely, you close the bottom door of the stove and then you can regulate it again. Um, that's, that's in an ideal world, that's how it's supposed to happen. If you forget to close the door, um, it can get very nasty very quickly. Um, sometimes when you rebuild a fire, for example, the coal might be a bit damp or, or you haven't used enough kindling wood um, and it takes a long time to get going and you're giving it plenty of air and it, yes, it'll probably go, but you know, it's going to take a while. It's easy to forget. Um, and that the worst thing you can do is to walk away and leave it um, unattended because as the fire catches, Obviously, it produces more heat, and that heat travels up the flue pipe, and that causes convection currents to flow, and that will draw in more air into the bottom of the stove. And that will make the fire burn hotter, which will send even more heat up the chimney, which will suck even more air in through the bottom of the stove. And it's a runaway, runaway reaction. As long as you've got fuel in the stove to burn up, this will just keep on getting worse and worse. And you get to the point, literally, where the stove is actually roaring, the air coming through it, it'll be making this <laughs> thundering noises. And I saw a boat once, uh, they must have done this, um, you could see flames coming out the top of the flue pipe about two feet into the air. Um, they were okay, but um, <laughs> this, this reaction could just run away out of control. And then, of course, the stove is getting hotter and hotter all the time. Any stove paint on the stove will start start to burn off. You'll, you'll smell the fumes, if you're around, that is. And uh, the stove will be creaking. And then it'll start to glow cherry red. I mean, at this point, or even before it gets to this point, it'll be so hot that it can literally just set fire to anything around it. And then it's, it's, it's very, very serious at that point. You never, ever want to let the stove get to that point. So as soon as the stove is going, you close it down. You'd be very, very careful about closing it down. Um, you regulate the air. It's a metal box. That's the purpose of a stove. It's a metal box where you can burn the fuel and you can control it precisely by regulating the air. Uh, so you do that, it's quite safe. Um, now, years ago, I had a job which was, uh, well, it was more than, it was more, than uh, more than 20 years ago now. I had a job which was shift work um, and it was in the winter time and I uh, it started at six o'clock in the morning and so I would have to get up in the winter at about half past four. First thing I would do would be to check on the stove which it was usually it would still be going but it would have burnt down quite low. So we put some more fuel in it and uh, just revive it. Then of course I'd make my packed lunch for the day, have a cup of tea and then cycle off in the dark up the country lanes a couple of miles to where I worked, which was all uphill. Not much fun at all in the winter. And I remember one day that I'd just gotten into work, sat down at my desk at six o'clock in the morning, feeling a bit groggy still. And suddenly I thought of the stove. Oh my God. I didn't remember closing the, the bottom door of the stove. I'd, uh, you know, I'd, I'd revived it as normal. I put fuel in it, uh, but I had no memory whatsoever of 
closing it down. And that at that time, it was, that was at least half an hour since I'd left the boat. And it would be at least 20 minutes to race back there. And I had the closest to almost had a panic attack there and then at work, sitting at my desk, absolutely mortified. I could not remember doing this. And then it dawned on me that, well, if I had forgotten, by the time I get back, it's going to be too late anyway. And so I kind of resigned myself. I thought, well, let's hope, let's hope that I, I did indeed shut it down. I had my phone with me and I didn't get any calls from British Waterways saying your boat's on fire. But all the same, when I got home, uh, at two o'clock we left work then, I got home went to the boat and it was lovely and warm and the stove was fine. I had closed it down, all was safe. But it was such a horrible experience, not knowing, that uh, that stuck with me for, for years. I mean, I'm very good, I'm not forgetful. I mean, I don't, I don't make these mistakes normally, but after that, on numerous occasions, Got a bit paranoid about it of course so i on many occasions for many occasions yeah I'd, I'd be cycling to work be a new job or whatever like that or cycling out anywhere anywhere leaving the boat going to the supermarket or whatever and i'd get about half a mile or a mile away from the boat and suddenly think of the stove oh my god did i close it down and it, it, it would kind of repeat itself and on many occasions I would stop, turn around and go back to the boat, all the way back, unlock the doors, go back in, check on the stove. Every time it's perfectly okay. I had remembered to do it. I am careful. But all the same, I've still got that paranoid feeling of, you know, oh, did I do it? And it's, 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 it's a horrible feeling. So what I decided to do was to, firstly to be extra extra careful about this, making sure everything was safe. Before I left, I would check the stove at least twice to make sure the doors were properly closed, you know, it all fueled up and going nicely and the doors were closed. There was nothing combustible around the stove and it, it was quite safe. As soon as I was satisfied that it was totally safe, I would take a, a black biro and put a tick little black tick on my hand so that when I left the boat in you know and gone a mile or so away from the boat and suddenly thought of the stove as I invariably do if any if there was any doubt whatsoever I could just look at my hand and if the tick was there I'd done it I'd checked it was all right and then I could be relaxed and carry on and go on my way and this has turned out to be really effective actually you know, it's, it's, it saved me from worry many times. I call it the tick of reassurance. And I suggest that it's not a bad idea. If you've got a stove that you, you do, you should do the same. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible thing if the stove goes out of control. It's, it's the most dangerous thing on your boat, really. Um, so be very careful. Now, in the next video I do on this subject, um, because this runaway combustion of the stove is such a serious business. In the next video I will give you a tip about what you can do to, to keep your eye on that, to monitor the situation when you're at home on the boat because it, it can still happen then. Um, so in the next video I'll tell you a bit more about that. So hopefully this has been helpful. Don't set your home alight. You know, this applies to anywhere where you use a stove be it a boat, a van, a house, wherever, be very careful. Um, I've known people to actually drive firewood out on top of the stove before. I mean, it's, it's uh, not, not a very safe thing to do. Um, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.